one of the most confusing, controversial aspects of war and order are your troops, your troop formations, what troop, what tier of troop makes sense in what situation. I've talked to a lot of players and people seem to have like some theoretical ideas, but then a lot of people can't back them up. But I have found some that can. I have learned and I have also found a website that is going to be linked in the description of this video that we are going to visit as well as take a look at some in-game stuff too. We're going to talk about troops, troop formations, and we are going to hopefully clear up any of this confusion for you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Welcome back, guys. Before we jump in and we start talking about troops, troop formations, and everything that goes along with that, if you guys are interested in downloading and playing War and Order, the download links are going to be in the description of this video below. Click on those links. It'll take you right to the download. Also, if you guys are interested in checking out any of the War and Order social media pages, all the links to their official social media stuff is going to be in the description of the video as well. And of course, thank you to the War and Order team for sponsoring today's video. All right, now let's jump into our drill ground. The drill grounds is where you guys can actually customize your marches. You can customize the name of your marches to keep things organized. You can customize the troops of the marches. You can customize how many of certain troops are in certain marches. So you can get very technical with it. It can get a little bit in depth and it can get very confusing, to be honest. So we are going to clarify this for you guys today. Again, I've talked to quite a few players in the game and everybody, like I said, seems to have, I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people have these theoretical ideas on what marches are good for what scenarios and what troop tiers are good for what. And most everybody can't seem to give any supporting reasoning. They're like, well, it just kind of is. Well, that wasn't good enough for me. So I found some people that did know, that did explain it. And then I've also, like I said, found a website that we are going to take a look at and visit here later in the video. And the link to that website, if you guys do want to check it out yourself, is going to be in the description. All right, so we are in our army setup. So you guys can see how many of each troop type and the tier of that troop that I have. So you guys can see us you can scroll down. I've got a whole host of these. Quick side note, if you guys do want to see a full picture of what you have available, because for your wall, you can also add golems to the equation, which you can't see in your uh, drill grounds there. But if you guys come over here and click on castle info, this will give you a full overview picture. You can see how many uh, of the golems you've got and then everything else as well. But let's jump back over into the drill grounds. All right, so you guys can see we can manage our troops. So we've got these set formations. You guys have got up to eight. Now, I've utilized five of them so far just because that's what I feel like I need right now for where I'm at in the game. I'm sure obviously there's going to come a point in time where I'll change this, refine this, whatever I need to do to adapt. But at the time, I've only really seen a need for these five, but you can create up to eight and you can label them with different names, things like that. So my first march here is my gathering march. So all I have in this march are my tier two uh, calves. These are going to be your overall best troops for gathering. They've got the most amount of gathering ability. So like build these tier these tier two uh calves and use them exclusively for gathering don't promote them don't do anything leave them at tier two because tier two is the best for gathering now the second march i've got is going to be attack the third is going to be defend the fourth is going to be hide and then the fifth is going to be time attack or speed attack and we're going to get into all of this a little bit more in depth but before we do and we're going to come back and explain this here in just a little bit but before we do let's jump over over to the website and let's talk about what they have to say. All right, so before we jump in and start talking about all of the details for each of these troop types, you've got even tier and odd tier troops. So obviously starting at level one, one tier troops are going to be odd, two tier, even, three, odd, four, even, and so on and so forth. And so this is going to clarify which tier of troop 
odd or even is going to be better in which scenario. So when it comes to infantry, the human soldier is the odd tier and the orc is even. So it says the human soldier again, which is the odd tier of troop for infantry specifically, it says the human soldier raises HP when player is defending against enemy troops. The orc, the orc soldier has shrouds that reduce the damage from magic attacks, referring to mages. So based on this, if you guys are going to have a defensive troop setup, which you guys saw I had an offensive or an attack setup, and then I had a defend setup, the odd tier of infantry, which is going to be the human soldier version of that, that is going to be on my defensive setup. This is going to help me when I am defending against enemy troops. And then if I am going to go on an attack, whether I am doing it solo or whether I'm going to be sending to a rally or whatever I'm doing, I'm going to be using the orcs because they are going to be better for attack as they have reduced damage from magic. Same thing for calves. The human version of the calves are going to be the odd tier. The even tier are going to be the orcs orc calves so it says the human calves are they're going to reduce damage uh when attacked by archers and then the orcs are going to raise attack power when player is on the attacking side so the description kind of speaks for itself if i am defending i'm going to want the odd tier of calves for the human because it's going to reduce damage when attacked by archers and then if i am on the offense or if i'm going to be attacking then i would want the even tier the orcs because they are going to have an increase in power for the attacking side moving on to archers the human archers are going to be the odd tier once again just like the previous two the elf archers are going to be the even tier just like the previous two and it says the human archers have the human archer has bonus damage against mages and then the elf archers has bonus damage against infantry now this one is not as clear as the previous two right because the other previous two pretty much laid it straight out for us and said if you're defending this if you're attacking this this isn't as clear so when it comes to archers the elf archers are going to be what you want for your offensive march and that is because the infantry or your frontline troops they're the ones that are going to be taking the initial brunt of the attack so the faster you can get those infantry out of there, the better. It's going to open up the ability for you to attack the back line, the weaker troops a lot faster and more effectively. And then the human archers you're going to want on your defensive setup if you're going to have archers, and that is going to help get those back line troops out of there, especially the mages, which do a pretty considerable amount of damage. And then last but not least, the mages, same thing, the humans are odds. The elf mages are going to be the even tier troops. It says the human mages get bonus damage against cavalry, and then the elf mages give bonuses to all soldiers during city defense. Now, based on the description, obviously that is pretty clear what is going to be the most beneficial for offensive defensive. The elf mages are going to be the better option for defense because it is going to give bonus it's going to give bonuses to all of the soldiers during city defense and then the human mages which again are the odd tier of mages going to give bonus damage against cavalry all right so we are now back in our drill grounds let's jump into my attack march and let's see how i have structured that so you guys can see three of the four odd tiers right which were the humans are going to be better for defending so i have gotten all of my odd tier or my human version of these troops out of there because those are defensive focused troops and i have put all of the even tier the uh infantry calves calves and then the archers and then the only one that was odd tier better for attack was going to be the mages so i have put my uh tier seven mages in there and then i have disabled everything else for attack this is strictly just my attack march obviously i need to uh set that up because i've trained more troops since then so i'm going to save that you guys can it's a good example actually i'm glad that that was able to be done on the video you guys can see how easy it is as you guys train new troops you guys can just adjust the amount of them that are allocated to each march and then move on like normal so i've got my fully attack based march here we jump out go to my through my uh, set formation number three this is my defensive focused setup here same thing, I've trained more troops, so I need to cap that off there. And I've got all of my odd tier troops here, except for the one. And then in this defensive march, I have also got angels. Angels are great for defense, so I put angels in my defensive setup 
as well. Now, the next march that I want to talk about that I've got is going to be my Hyde March. What is this and why do I have it? Well, the Hyde March just makes my life easier if I'm going to be attacked, if we're in a kill event or whatever. I have my defensive focused troops set up still in my base. So I have disabled all of the or I've removed all of the defensive focused troops out of this march because I want those troops to stay in my base and I want or my castle and then I want all of my my uh, offensive focused or my attack troops to be hidden and to be protected so that way if and when I do get attacked I'm not going to lose any of those offensive focused troops this is all defensive right here so I've got just the defensive stuff I've got all of my t2 um, calves out of here for gathering everything that could be a possible weakness on defense, they're out of there. They're going to go into my alliance fort where I, they can't be attacked, they can't be killed, and then I will pull them out if and when the time is needed. All right, a, another little helpful tip that I want to give you guys, if you guys will come over here to your castle info, you guys can click on the castle info button and you guys are going to be able to see your total army. This is going to tell you how many total troops you have got trained and active in your army this also includes your defense golems so you can factor those in or not because of course those are defensive centered uh troops they, that's all they really do and can focus on you can't send them to alliance forts or anything like that so you can factor them into this total or not but the the game ob obviously automatically will so taking all of my troops into consideration, I've got a total army of 117,000, just shy of 118,000. We'll call it 118,000 uh, for simplicity's sake. So I've got a total of 118,000 troops. And then what we need to do is back out, go to Lord, go to check details. You guys are going to come down here to uh, development and you guys can see wounded limit boost. This is going to be how many total troops you guys can heal so anything over that total amount there is going they're going to die you can't heal them or anything else so you guys can see i am technically actually a little bit over the threshold i'm not too worried about it because the golems are included in there but you guys can see i'm over the limit so that's i'm kind of walking a fine line there right so that's where those marches those specific marches come into play because if i know there's going to be a kill event coming up or anything that could potentially cause me to lose troops or for my troops to get killed i've got that defensive focused march already set up structured ready to go all i've got to do is send it out into my alliance fort and those troops are now safe and they are not going to be hurt hopefully this helps guys again there are uh you know, a lot of theories out there. I've talked to some super knowledgeable players, got some more insight, more information. And I'm also, like I said, just a reminder, the link to that website is going to be in the description as well. If you want to check out that and get your own feel for it, you're free to do so. But this has helped me tremendously understand how to structure troops, what troops to train, what troops to put into specific marches, where to hide troops, how to check out how many I've got and my wounded capacity limit, all of those things. This was tough for me to figure out at first hopefully this makes that process easier for you guys thank you guys so much for watching again just a reminder if you are interested in downloading and playing war and order the download links are going to be in the description of the video as well as all of the official war and order social media and again thank you to the team at war and order for sponsoring today's video thank you to you guys for watching this video and we'll catch you guys on the next one